Two men in Boston have potentially been cured of HIV. So what does this mean for other people with the virus? Anthony here for DNews, and two men known only as the Boston patients appear to be HIV free after bone marrow transplants and continued medication. Now, both of them were HIV positive and on antiretroviral medication for it. Now, later, they were both diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. Now, this is not uncommon in HIV patients since their immune systems are compromised. Now, after a round of chemotherapy, they were given the bone marrow transplants to help them create healthy blood in their systems to keep the lymphoma from returning. Now, they were also still taking their HIV meds. During regular check-ins, the doctors noticed that the amount of virus in their systems kept lowering as the donor cells replaced their original ones. And eventually, there was no detectable HIV DNA or RNA inside of them, none. So four months ago, the doctors took one of the men off of their medication. And then two months ago, they stopped medicating the other one. And as of today, they still have no HIV in their system. Now, you probably heard about something similar to this before. Two years ago, a man in Berlin named Timothy Ray Brown announced that he'd been cured entirely of HIV from a similar transplant that he had in 2006. But that was a special case. The bone marrow he received had this super rare genetic mutation that makes it highly resistant to HIV. The bone marrow the Boston patients received did not have that mutation. Now, the Boston patients are still being monitored to be sure that the virus is totally gone, but even if it is, two people do not make a viable study for a medical procedure. That's actually what science calls a super lucky break. More importantly, bone marrow transplants are pretty rare. More than 130,000 people in the U.S. alone are diagnosed with serious blood diseases that could require bone marrow transplants. Only about a quarter of those people wind up having matching donors in their families. 7,500 people are looking for unrelated donors at any given time, and a thousand of them die every year because they can't find one. So that means even if this treatment works, it's not going to be an easy, readily available cure. But that's not bad news. This is still good news because we're potentially in a place where we can save more people than before and use this new knowledge to help us find that easier cure. And other new aggressive treatments are making progress too. Check out our video on the baby in Mississippi who seemed to be cured a few months back. And in the meantime, if you want to help people in need of bone marrow donors, it's crazy easy. If you're in the US, you can sign up at bethematch.org and for the rest of the world, check out bone marrow donors worldwide at bmdw.org and help save a life potentially.